Have you ever wanted to do cool sage wall boosts like this? Where your enemy just simply runs past you, they start to plant and you can get a nice easy headshot. But every time you try, it ends up looking something like this. Today, I'm going to teach you the 5 key walls that you will have to learn as a Sage main in order to become an expert Sage and a confident Sage in the battlefield. Now, I have already made a tutorial on this, but it was 7 months ago, so I wanted to give you guys an updated tutorial and just talk through it a bit more so that you understand how to do each wall perfectly. And on top of that, I will be adding in one wall which I didn't cover last time. So the 5 key walls that I'm going to be running through is first of all the Sage long wall where you jump off of an object and place a long wall, very easy to do. The jumping wall boost where you jump up, place your wall on top of an object and get raised with it. The one way wall which is a combination of either the long wall or the jumping wall so you use either one of them to create one ways. The poking sage wall which I did cover in my last tutorial as well where you can place a wall through an object and stand on the other side. So for example you can peek here and stand over here. And then one that I didn't cover last time is the collision wall that I'm going to call where you place your wall halfway inside of another object to create a long wall just like this. Okay, let's start off with the most commonly used sage wall. I'm sure you've seen this in many, many videos by now or you've even tried it for yourself. So the first one that we will run through is the sage long wall where you jump off of an object and you place the wall so it creates one extra block. And now you have a crazy advantage and a crazy angle just by standing on one extra block. So in my last tutorial, I actually showed you guys how to do it, but in this one, I think the better way to go around it is to tell you how not to do it, because a lot of people make key mistakes, and I see it time and time again, so I'm just going to tell you what not to do in order to avoid making those mistakes. So the first mistake I see everybody do is they jump way too far back, and then they place the wall, and they're like, oh no, where is my extra block? It didn't get placed. Well, that's because you're just going way too far back. And the second mistake is that people wait either too long to place the wall, or they end up placing the wall way too early out of panic and it just creates that one block as well. So as you can see, in all of these attempts, there is not an extra block. Every single attempt was a fail. In order to make the long walls consistently, you will want to avoid making these mistakes. So for the first one, you don't want to jump too far backwards. What you want to do is aim for around two to three meters away. So somewhere around here, and then you want to place the wall. So you only want to go about this far away and then place your wall. You don't want to go all the way back here where people just jump way too far back and then place the wall. And for the second most common mistake, you don't want to wait too long to place the wall, so you don't want to go down here, and you don't want to place it too early. You don't want to place it when you're up here. You want to aim to place the wall when your feet are parallel with the ledge that you're jumping off of. So not your crosshair, you don't want your crosshair to be parallel, you want your feet to be in line with the ledge, which is around here, so your feet just want to be in line with the ledge so that the wall actually thinks that it's just an extension of the ledge. That's how the game works, you see. Your legs just tend to act as an extension off of the ledge. So because you want to place your legs in line with the ledge, the wall will think, oh wait, that's just the platform continuing, so we'll place one extra block behind you. So if we put all of that together, it looks like this. As you can see, every time I wait until I'm parallel, I don't jump too far back, and I can get it every single time that I try to make the long wall. You see, just by avoiding the key mistakes, you will also be able to make these walls consistently. It takes a little bit of practice, but honestly, once you get the timing down, it's super easy to do and you will never fail doing a long wall. The second wall that we're going to run through is the jumping wall boost. Now, this one is very, very easy to do. If you're failing this one, you're just doing it wrong. So once again, we're going to cover the mistakes that most people make and how to avoid making those mistakes. So the first most common mistake that I see is people place the wall way too early when they jump. So they do that and then place the wall. Or they wait way too long to place the wall. So they place it after they've jumped and come back down from the peak. So what you actually want to do is you want to jump crouch and when you're at the peak of your jump you want to place the wall the peak is here look so when i jump that's the peak you want to wait until you get to here and then you want to place the wall so you jump place jump place and once you get the timing down it's very very easy to do if you're failing these you're just doing it wrong that's all you have to do it the right way and stay patient with it so you want to jump place you just mainly have to avoid the mistake of jumping and placing the wall way too early. That's the most common one that I see people doing. They just try jump and place immediately because they're panicking to try to get the wall down. 
You want to jump, take your time, get to the peak of your jump, and then place the wall. By doing this, you will get it every single time. There is no way that you should be failing this one. Just jump, wait until you hit the peak of your jump, and then place the wall. All right, moving on to the third wall, we're going to be covering the one-way walls, or as my chat calls them, the flow ways, just because I use them so often and I first popularized the use of them back in October. The first thing you'll have to know about one-way walls is how they work. So when you create a long wall and you place it on top of an object, you can see that there's a little gap underneath the wall. Now, what you have to keep in mind is that if there's an even distance between you and the enemy and there's a wall in between, you will both be able to see each other underneath the wall. So as you can see, I can see there and the enemy would be able to see me as well. So this isn't a one way because they can shoot you back as well. A perfect one way needs to be able to fully cover you whilst being able to hit the enemy. My favorite one way that I use for B main is this one right here. So you can jump backwards, place a long wall. And as you can see now, when they push out of B main, they can't see anything underneath that boat, nothing. So when they push out, it's a complete one way. They just see a wall in their face. But if we go over here, we can see everything. So as they're running out, we can shoot their feet, shoot their legs, and get one or two kills right here, and then even fall back. So that's following the first rule of the one way. We have to place the wall closer towards the enemy than it is to us. Now you can do the same on this side as well. So you just have to use the jumping wall technique or the long wall technique that I explained earlier. That's the jumping wall where you can jump two meters away from an object, place the long wall, or you can do it off of the object like that. So this now creates a one way. If you were to sit here, it would create a one way for this side. And you can hold CT. So this one would be for after plant. And obviously from this side, like I just mentioned, it would be to hold B main. So those two are perfect one ways. It's very, very easy to do. Just keep in mind, you have to do a long wall or a jumping wall boost. And the wall has to be closer towards the enemy. It cannot be an equal distance between you and the enemy. So make sure the wall is always pointing towards your enemy in order to create a one way. The beauty of one way walls is that you can get super creative with them. So for example... I can create one right here and now I can hold cubby and mark it but if they're pushing CT I can also hold CT with a one way. You can also do it for after plant on site so we can create a one way right here and as they're pushing into site you can now sit and hold lane but if they push here we can shoot them as they come out as well. Now you can make the distance vary as well if you're doing it on stairs you can do varying heights so for example you can do it much higher up to make sure you get an easier kill. If the enemy is super close to the wall like this, you don't have to worry about there being a tiny gap underneath the wall because they won't be able to see underneath it anyway. So if the enemy is very close to the wall, you can do a big height difference to make sure you've got an easy kill. If the enemy is not as close to the wall, you have to do a much smaller and lower wall down just to make sure that they can't see you. Those are pretty much the only rules you'll have to know about one-way walls. You can create them anywhere you go. If you see an object, you can jump, place a wall. There you go. There's another one-way. And you can do this absolutely anywhere on any map. So as you can see, when they push out now, they won't really be able to see you if you're sat in this back corner right here. So go ahead, have fun with these. I've created hundreds and hundreds. If you want to watch my videos, I might make a full guide on different maps for you guys if you'd like to see that. There are many, many different one-way walls or flowways if you want to call them. And all you have to do is just get creative, use your imagination and have fun. The enemy will not expect you to be checking underneath the wall and shooting their feet as they run past. Moving on to poking sage walls, these can either be used to set yourself up in a strange position behind another object, or you can even set your teammates up. So for teammate ones, for example, you could place a wall here, and you can have a jet stand on that wall, so as they push out of B main, you can have your teammates stood up there. Or you could do a fast peek like this, place the wall there, your teammate has to jump up and they can get raised up with the wall. So that's a quick example of some teammate boosting ones, but let's cover the actual ones that you will be using within game. So let's go back to Ascent A Rafters. Like I showed at the beginning, this is a super useful wall. There are many different walls that you can do in Rafters, but if you want to get sneaky and more creative, you can stand right here, place the wall and go around the corner. Now what you can do is either hold here, let them run out of Rafters and hold an off angle, or as they're breaking the wall, you can sneak back around. And because most of the time people knife walls, they don't shoot them. You can sneak around and as they're knifing the wall, get a nice easy headshot right there. Poking sage walls can be created absolutely anywhere. So I can literally show you, you can place a wall anywhere and it will go through another object. So you can get as creative as you want. You can boost your teammates anywhere as well. So let me show you a really crazy one that I've never really seen anyone do. But for this one, if you have a jet or an omen, you can actually boost them to the other side of this wall. I'll show you right now. 
So as you can see, the wall goes through one wall, two walls, and it comes out this side. And now if you have a jet or an omen, they can stand on this bit right here. And if you're holding this as an after plant, you're hidden from rafters and you can hold door right here. And the enemy team won't really see you. So they'll push out, they'll check left, they'll check right. And they can't actually see you up there. So that's a super sneaky one. Just keep in mind that the wall doesn't get obstructed by any objects. It can go through absolutely everything. Another very creative poking sage wall that you can do is if you know that the enemy team is rushing a site and there's nothing that you can do to stop it, you can place a wall like this and this will allow you to block the switch right here so they can't actually close the door. So you don't have to use these just for like teammate boosting or boosting yourself. You can actually use it to obstruct the enemy team's positions so they can no longer just rush into site and close the door. You can place your wall and now you can hold an angle like this or drop back behind your wall and you can wait for your team to come back in and peek with you. Sage Wars are all about just having fun, getting as creative as possible, so just do keep in mind that nothing will obstruct your Sage Wall. You can place it through every single object in the game, and it will go directly through it, so you can get very, very creative with these. Okay, last but not least, we're going to cover Collision Walls. These are the ones that I didn't cover in my last wall boost, because at the time, I actually wasn't aware of them. That was a way back. So right now, we do have the Collision Walls that a lot of Sage Mains use as well. So these walls basically, once you place the wall, it will go halfway within another object, such as like another wall, and it will act as though it's being placed on another object. This means that it will create a long wall because it thinks that it's running across a whole platform, just like it would going across, let's say, a rafters like this. So the wall behaves as though it has a constant interaction with a flooring, and that's what it will do when you place it halfway within another wall. It thinks as though that this side of the wall is the floor as well, so it will create the full long wall just like it does right here, and it won't float halfway and create just one block. So just by putting it halfway within inside of a wall, so you have to just twist your wall, which is hold down right click and move your mouse. So it goes halfway within another wall, just like that, and once it's placed, it will create the full long wall and not just one block off of the edge. You can combine the collision walls with jumping wall boosts or long walls as well. So if we come over here, we can turn the wall halfway to our side so it goes within this wall. Just like that. So it will be tilted within this wall right now. And then you want to just jump and place the jumping wall boost. And now it will be placed on this side as well. You see, so you can now create random different walls that the enemy might not expect. And you can come here. Now you can hold this angle. Or as they're pushing out, you can hold this angle right here. So if they jump up onto the wall, what they will see is just a crazy sage main floating right here. So you can create a lot of different off angles just by understanding how the wall behaves. So make sure when you are placing your walls, rather than just placing them flat against the wall, if you want to create the long wall, place them halfway within the wall that you are next to. So just like that. On Ascent, you can do this wall in many different places. So you can come here, tilt your wall within that one jump up and place it and as you can see it didn't create just one block it created another one here so now we can jump across and hold b main from this angle right here so it's all about getting super creative and confusing your enemies as to where you're going you can also jump back by the way keep that in mind and then you can run across to short as well so you can cover a lot of distance just with that one wall right there a very good one that i use at the start of a round is i would jump here and place the wall halfway within this one and then right at the start of the round, it's normally around three to five seconds in, I'm already up onto the wall and peaking market right here. So if they have an operator, they'll be double scoped in on top mid right here and you will have a crazy off angle. Boom, get that one tap, get the kill. Just like the poking sage walls, you want to just experiment with these, try out different areas, different sides, and just get super creative with them and play along with your friends as well because you can teammate boost your friends by doing these walls as well. So for example, if you wanted to create that one, but you didn't want to get up on there, you can boost your teammate up there and then you can double peek like this. So just get very, very creative, see what you guys can make with it and just have fun. That's the main part about being a sage mate, just have fun with it, guys. Those are the five key features that you will have to know as a sage main. Keep those walls in mind, go and practice them in a custom game, have fun with them. You can also break walls faster, just one quick tip. You can break walls faster by going ghost mode inside of them and then letting go of ghost mode. Or you can use a judge as well. A judge is a very good gun to break the walls if you are messing them up quite a lot. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I will be doing more guides for you guys if you like it. I can create different guides for different maps with variations of attacking walls and defending walls. Just let me know what you'd like to see down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys with more Sage content in the next video.